and I'm going to talk through level one genetics problem number 17. Let's read the problem together. Uh, in summer squash, colorless fruit is due to a dominant gene W. Colored fruit is due to its recessive allele W. Okay, obviously the first W is capital, the lowercase W uh, is the recessive allele. Oops, sorry about that. Disc-shaped fruit is determined by a dominant gene D. Sphere-shaped fruit is uh, by its recessive allele, lowercase d. All right? So from that information right now, let's write down our uh, allele symbols. Okay? So capital W, that's colorless. And so our lowercase w would be color or colored. Uh, our capital D is disc shape. And our lowercase d is sphere. All right. <clears throat> now, let's get to our question. 17a, how many genotypes may squash plants have in regard to color and shape of fruit? So all I'm going to do here is just list the various combinations of w's and d's that are possible. Okay? So for 17a, uh, obviously we could be homozygous dominant for both. All right. We could be heterozygous for the first one and homozygous dominant for the second gene. Homozygous recessive for the first gene, homozygous dominant for the second one. Homozygous dominant for the first one, heterozygous for the second. Heterozygous for the first one, heterozygous also for the second. Homozygous recessive for the first one, heterozygous for the second. Homozygous dominant for the first trait. Homozygous recessive for the second trait. Heterozygous for the first trait. Homozygous recessive for the second trait. And then, obviously, homozygous recessive for both traits. So that's 17A. <clears throat> 17B, how many categories of phenotypes could be expected from their genotypes? Well, we have four categories. A fruit could be colorless and disc-shaped. A uh, fruit or squash here could be colorless and sphere-shaped. We could have colored with disc shape, and we could have colored with sphere shape. So we have those four categories, all right? 17C, how many different double homozygous genotypes are possible? Well, we have four. You could have homozygous dominant for both traits. You could have homozygous dominant for one, homozygous recessive for the second, homozygous recessive for the first, homozygous dominant for the second, or homozygous recessive for both. So we have four different genotypes that would be homozygous for both um, traits. 17D is what phenotypic ratio would you expect from a cross between two doubly heterozygous plants? Okay, now that's a dihybrid cross. We should recognize that. So that means double heterozygous crossed with double heterozygous. That's a dihybrid cross. And what you need to know then is that results in a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. <clears throat> so 9 out of 16, 3 out of 16, 3 out of 16, and 1 out of 16. Those are our four different um, ratios that we have for these phenotypes. So that's both dominant traits. We could have colorless with sphere. That means one dominant trait, one recessive trait. And we 
could have colored with disk. That means one recessive and one dominant. And then we could have colored with sphere, which is both recessive traits. All right, that's it for number 17. Thank <laughs> you.